Welcome to Jared Scott Outdoors. This YouTube channel is dedicated to getting our youth more involved in the outdoors. To do this, I'll be out with family and friends doing all sorts of outdoor adventures. This week on Jared Scott Outdoors, we're heading back out to the Copper Basin and the backpacking trip we were on up in the Goat, Betty, and Babti Lake area. With three lakes to fish and a summit to bag, there were lots of things to do. So without wasting time, let's get back after it. As a reminder, last week we made the five mile hike up Broad Canyon Trail to Babti Lake that sits at around 10,200 feet elevation. Literally just above that lake, 200 feet higher, is Goat Lake. And we ended the show with me hiking up there on my own to test out the fishing, which was looking to be pretty good as I caught one rather quickly. As you can see, there was still some ice on the lake. The back 30% was iced up, but it was melting pretty quickly. I knew I should have put the camera up. Just looked like a good spot. It's hard to hold a camera and bring a fish in at the same time. As I kept fishing, the bite was fairly consistent. I'd catch one or two and then move 20 to 30 yards along the bank and then catch one or two more. As long as I kept moving, I continued to get bites. Can you believe I'm just up here by myself fishing this incredible lake? Got another soul out here. Now this one smacked it. Right over here on the spot where the lake disappears. Hammer to trout. So we can get it in one hand in here. The fly of choice seemed to be the beadhead prince nymph. Nice. Here, I don't know. Another beautiful fish. Look at the colors on that thing. I do not know how you beat that. I mean, again, I'm by myself. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of young men and other adults down at the at Bapti, but up here on on Goat Lake, I'm just by myself, and the fishing is great. It's just a calm, wonderful way to end the day. So I'll probably try to catch a few more and head back down. I fished a little bit more and then decided I'd better start working my way back down to camp before it got dark. While I'd come up to Goat Lake off trail, I used a well-worn trail between the two lakes to make my way back down to camp. The next day after a very relaxing morning, Kate and I decided to head off to Betty Lake. As Kate and I headed across a rock field between Babti and Betty Lake, I was in for a big surprise. We're doing a rock scramble um, to not lose elevation from Babti over to Betty, and so we're just coming through some rock fields. And I look down, I about step on a, a mountain goat We've got the whole thing here but there's its head um, which for me is pretty exciting because I've never been able to hunt these I have picked up a sheep I've got the curls and everything from a ram and so now I can add this to my collection I think it gives me about all of the the big game animals we've got here um, anyways I'll euro this I'll clean it up boil it euro it and that'll be a fantastic skull to to add to my collection but kind of a cool find to come out here when you're just heading over to go do some fishing and you end up with a mountain goat. So unfortunately now I gotta pack this thing off. Now have you noticed this country we're hiking through? It is absolutely gorgeous. We did finally tie into the main trail to Betty Lake and finish the last part of the hike before coming over the top and seeing Betty Lake out in front of us. Not only is this lake in an incredible setting, but it has a history of producing some pretty impressive cutthroat trout. So Kate and I were both pretty excited to test it out with a fly or two. Beautiful leg, beautiful setting. See if we can catch some fish. There's a couple more right there. And uh, just keep enjoying our time up here. Nearing the water, we saw plenty of fish cruising along the shore. So that just added to our anticipation of what was to come. 
For as many fish as we were seeing, and lack of other people, we thought the fish would be ready to hit whatever we threw at them. However, it actually took a little work to get their attention. All right, I took the switch and a couple flies. I missed a few on some droppers. Went with the dry, switched out to an ant. And first cast out, brought one in. Kind of your typical high mountain lake cutthroat. This lake has potential to have some bigger ones, so we will keep at it. But at least now maybe I found a fly that'll work. It might have been a fluke, we'll see. But that was an ant. I thought I had them figured out now, but once again, it was several minutes before I was able to get another one to actually do more than just look at my fly and actually take it. A little bit bigger one. Here we go, it's another pretty fish. Still on the smaller side compared to goat, but pretty and we're able to watch them come up and snatch them. So I think now that we've got, we're seeing them a lot, it's pretty shallow. They can see pretty well. Um, I think we're gonna circle around and maybe hit where it's a little bit deeper. Kate and I headed off across the outlet of the lake and around to the south end where very quickly I was able to hook up again on the ant I was fishing with. One more. Another pretty fish. Cade wasn't getting any takers on whatever fly he was using, but I was sure able to get more action. The ant is still working good. Probably the best one so far. Just slurp that ant. Kate's still working on it. He might have to switch to an ant here. Another fish on the ant, I think. It went for the ant. I put an egg on as a dropper. Looks like the dropper snagged it after it missed the ant, but it was the ant that it went for. There's actually two of them that came up at it about the same time. There we are. There we go. Probably half a dozen now for me. So I think Cade might want to put an ant on. See if we can get him a fish. Cade's over there working on his, still trying to catch his first on a fly. That's looking like a good one too. Finally, Cade made it happen. Cade, you got a fish! Yeah. Wait, it's not landed yet. There we are. I think my dropper. Good job, bud. So that one took your Prince Nymph. There you go. Yeah! <laughs> Good job. Good job, Cade. Once he figured him out, he kept at it. That's a good one. Heck yeah. Yeah! <laughs> Two in a row within minutes. Heck yeah. Good job. Even though he had an ant, he was trailing that with a Prince Nymp. And for him, that's what they were hitting. I took my dropper again. As we kept moving along the south end towards the back of the lake, we encountered more snow clear down to the shoreline. This part of the lake was also mostly still covered in ice. However, there was still enough room to fish between the shoreline and the ice in many spots. And yep, the fish were there as well. Cade was also still doing well bringing in those cutties. As I pan along the lake and the mountains from this better perspective, you can see for yourself how cool this setting was. And something that's common in the high country, you can also see that we had some stormy weather threatening us. Luckily for us, it only sprinkled here and there, so we were able to keep fishing. All right, this lake is awesome. It's such a pretty view. At first, I was kind of having a hard time catching fish, but once I got the right flies on, I was definitely getting them and starting to get them more. So it's awesome up here though. 
This one's a little bit smaller guy. We'll have them where they just hammer us for a few minutes and then it kind of calms down and then they start hitting it again. Of course, it could be that we're moving around. I think they kind of wise up to you. Well, I realized something that would be a good tip right now and that's to keep moving around. So we're watching these fish cruise and so we know they're here and, and you'll come to a spot, you'll catch one or two and then it just kind of dies down. And, and sometimes we stick around for a little while, like right now I can see four fish coming this way. And because you can see them and you know they're there, so you just keep fishing, keep fishing, keep fishing. Now what's happened on, for Kate and us, you know, we kept moving and we kept catching fish. And now we got up to a spot where there was a bunch of fish and we did catch a handful, but then it just completely quit, even though they kept cruising. And so the tip is, if you don't have to, just keep moving around because they kind of seem to wise up to you. You know, the fish that are cruising, even though they're there, if you've got room to move, then just keep moving around. Now, Babti Lake, it's it's a small enough lake that everybody's just kind of getting their spot and they just stay there all day. And if that's the case, you better be switching flies up and stuff because they definitely wise up to you. So if you can, move around, find new fish that aren't used to you, and I think you'll have more success. All right, so I've got my fishing rod, I've got my walking stick, I've got pack. We are going to actually summit a peak um, and do some fishing afterwards. So we're going to hike up to Standhope Peak. That's Standhope Peak is right in between Goat Lake and Betty Lake. It's a pretty high one. It's not quite 12,000 feet. It's uh, just a little bit under 11,900 feet. So from Goat Lake, it's about a 1,500 foot climb. So we're this close. We may as well go ahead and summit one of Idaho's bigger peaks. And, and see the view. To summit Standhope Peak, you'll start out by taking the trail up to Goat Lake. Once to Goat Lake, you can see the peak. It's pretty obvious as it's the backdrop to the lake. So the other side of that saddle is Betty. Here we got Goat. Betty on the other side. Follow that ridge up to the peak. From Goat Lake, you can see a trail that switchbacks its way up to the top of a saddle. Now that trail actually will drop back down to Betty Lake. You saw that Cade and I went a different route, which is probably the easier one, but this is another way to do it. Now if you don't want to go to Betty Lake, but you want to go up to the peak, you take the same trail right up to the top of that switch back up at the saddle, and then from there, you'll just follow that spine right up to the peak. This peak may not be one of the Idaho's 12ers falling just short, but I'll tell you what, I don't know which ones you can have a view like that as you're summiting. That is quite the view. If your goal is to go to the peak, you'll actually leave the trail. However, after a little while, you'll find that another trail materializes. At first, it'll seem more like a goat trail than anything, but as you continue, you'll notice the trail becomes more and more obvious and defined. In general, the trail is just off the north edge of the spine of the ridge. You can choose to stay on the spine and do more of a rock scramble or take the trail, whichever you prefer. Either way, you'll end up at the top if you just keep plugging along. So for a few minutes, follow along as we head on up towards the top. Goat Lake, Babti Lake, Betty Lake, other lakes. It's incredible, incredible place up here.
That is quite the view. I know the camera doesn't do it justice, but it's only gonna get better. Once near the top, you'll see two options to make the last push. So you take that chute, it's a little slicker, or in my opinion, the rocks, a little more solid. When I could finally see the peak just ahead, we had the majority of our group already hanging out enjoying the amazing view from the top. From Angel Lake to our west, Surprise Valley to the north, Betty, Goat, and Babti Lake to our east, and all the beautiful peaks to our south, the 360 degree view was indeed an amazing sight. Definitely worth the hike to get here. This is really a perfect peak if you want to come summit one that's not, not really too scary, that has too much exposure. Um, Cade, what'd you think of it? It was sweet, it was awesome. <laughs> it was a good time. Now they've all left, so it's much more calm and quiet and enjoyable up here, <laughs> if you ask me. Um, so Cade and I are just kind of taking the last little minute here to enjoy it up here, and, and we're gonna head off the mountain, but that's gonna wrap up this week's episode. We'll see you next week. These episodes can't be done without your help. You know the drill. Please make some comments, like, and subscribe, and I'll keep working on more videos.